Liberal Democrats, it is good to be here. I wanted to start with a story about an experience I had 15 years ago. I was in the city of Bucharest in Romania. My dad had been working as an economic development consultant in Bucharest on projects to help the accession of Romania to the European Union. And while he was working out there, then every so often, my sister or I, my mum, would go out there and uh, have a little mini city break and, uh, and catch up with Dad. Now, on this one occasion, we went to see some of the sites. And he took me to see the People's House. Sounds quite nice and fluffy, but the name is very misleading. Because this was not anything for the people. This was the project of the megalomaniac Ceausescu, the dictator of Romania. And it was a grand project to create a huge building. This is the heaviest building in the world. This has 1,100 rooms. And the grandeur of it was completely grotesque when you consider the poverty that people in Romania were living in and what level of resources were put into building this huge vanity project. Forced labour was used to make it happen. And it's estimated that 3,000 people died in the building of this palace. It is now used as the seat of government uh, in Romania. But such is its immense and vast scale that 70% of the rooms are still not used. That I tell because that was the communist legacy. That was what people in Eastern Europe and similar types of travesty, what they were subject to under communist rule. And the European Union is such a contrast. And I think it is important that we take a proper view across history of what the European Union has really achieved. Because it has been an immensely successful project in creating peace and security. The way in which the European Union has been able to promote the liberal values of human rights and democracy across parts of Eastern Europe the way in which we have been able to encourage Turkey to take steps towards improving human rights. The way in which the European Union is a foundation for peace. We have seen it in the Balkans. I remember when I went to Kosovo and I spoke to people who were just reeling from the aftermath of that brutal war. And yet, when you look to their future, how could they live side by side with these people who they were fighting with? And the answer came back clearly that the European Union was going to be the hope that under that umbrella, these countries may be able to live in peace alongside each other again. And of course, the 70 years of peace and security, where it is inconceivable that the major powers of Western Europe would go to war against one another, so often dismissed as if that's something, well, you know, of course that's the case. That is a huge achievement. And in our own country, in Northern Ireland, the way in which the European Union has been that cornerstone that has underpinned the Good Friday Agreement, and which was shockingly absent from the debate in 2016, and yet has come home to us all so vividly, particularly when you hear the young people of Northern Ireland talk about their future, the children of the peace process, so powerful, in what they want to keep Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom in the European Union. And at a time when we are... <laughs> at a time when we are in more uncertain global times than for as long as I remember, we have the rise of these strong men leaders this tide of populism and nationalism rolling in. We have Trump in the West and Putin in the East. We are in between. And in these times, where 
do we want to be strategically? Who do we want to be alongside? Surely this is not the time to turn our backs on our closest allies, our closest neighbours who share our liberal values. And for all these reasons, and for so many more, for the reasons Ed outlined, for the economic reasons, for our influence in the world, for what we need to do, we must stop Brexit. And Liberal Democrats, make no mistake, we can stop Brexit. We, Liberal Democrats, have been fighting for our place in Europe for 50 years, we have a proud history of doing this as the pro-European party. We have been fighting for a people's vote for three years. We were the first to call for a public vote on the final deal. Long before it was fashionable, we Liberal Democrats got there first. And I, I am delighted, fellow Liberal Democrats, that that is a fight that we are winning that it started with us, but it is now a movement that includes people from all different parties and none, that has seen millions of people campaigning on this issue. We should be proud. We have come so far. We are winning. And, you know, we really are. 704 gains. We are winning again. Well done, every single person involved in creating those storming local election results last week. Well done to each and every single one of you. And so, at this launch of our European election manifesto, our message could not be clearer. We, Liberal Democrats, want to stop Brexit. What do we want? Stop Brexit! What do we want? Stop Brexit! Are you sure we want to? Stop Brexit! But you have a choice. You have a choice. Because the wonderful people in our campaigns department have decided to produce not just one cover for our manifesto, <laughs> but there is an alternate. So, what do we think? What do we say? Are we sure? Okay, I'm going to do a test here, right? <laughs> Some of you will have a preference for, for one of these over the other, right? So whichever one is your favourite, I want you to shout loudest for that one. So first of all... I think we have a clear winner. <laughs> The Liberal Democrat message is absolutely clear. We go into these elections to say, vote Lib Dem, stop Brexit, indeed bollocks to Brexit. Let's go out there and win again. Woo!